This unit is all about the reactions and equilibria of Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. And this unit is great for at least two reasons. First of all, it gives us a chance to practice a lot of the fundamental equilibrium concepts and skills that we've developed previously in a context, and this is the second reason, of great practical importance. Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases pop up everywhere in everyday life, professional careers, all kinds of places. And so understanding the reactivity and in particular the equilibrium properties of this class of molecules is real in class of reactions is really, really important. Bronsted-Lowry acid base reactions also tend to be very, very fast, which means they're a great fit for equilibrium thinking because they come to equilibrium extremely quickly, within milliseconds in most cases. So we're going to get a chance to think a lot about equilibrium on a deeper level and in an important context in this unit. It's got a lot of sections and there's a lot to cover, but by the time we're done with this, you're going to be a master of chemical equilibrium. In the first section, we'll introduce the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base model, define what we mean by an acid and a base, a Bronsted acid and Bronsted base, and define the idea of a conjugate pair and explain why that's so important. We'll see conjugate pairs throughout the remainder of this unit after that first section. In section two, we'll define pH and pOH, which are really at the end of the day concentration measures. I'll make this point again there, but these are measures of the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions in aqueous solution, which are two of the most important ions for Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases in water. In the third section, we'll introduce this idea that acids and bases can have different strengths. And in fact, we can use equilibrium constants to capture those strengths quantitatively. So whereas we may have seen in the previous units this qualitative idea of strong versus weak acids, we can put a quantitative spin on that now with the relative strengths of acids and bases and the acidity constant. In the fourth section, we'll introduce the idea that acids and bases do not need to be neutral. They can be cations or anions that are part of salts, and the reactions of those cations and anions with water, so-called hydrolysis reactions, can produce hydronium or hydroxide and give rise to acidic or basic solutions as a result. So we can think of the cations and anions as Bronsted acids or bases in their own right. In section five, we'll look at acids that have multiple acidic protons, so-called polyprotic acids, and some interesting things that come up there, such as how acidity changes as we remove protons from a polyprotic acid. In section six, we'll look at an important mixture of an acid and its conjugate base, or a base and its conjugate acid, known as a buffer. This has the property of being able to resist strong or large changes in pH as a result of the addition of an acid or a base, and we'll understand why in that section. And actually, it's a nice segue into the topic of acid-base titrations in section seven, where we'll see what happens when we start with, for example, a weakly acidic solution, or strongly acidic solution for that matter, and we add a base to it, increasing the pH. The way the pH increases follows a familiar pattern. We'll explain this pattern, look at key points on the so-called titration curve, and learn how equilibrium fits into all this, and how we can use a titration curve, both for stoichiometric purposes, which we've actually done before, and to get information about the equilibrium of an acid or base. For example, measure the equilibrium constant. We'll see all that in section seven and a lot more fundamental equilibrium ideas put to the test and put into practice in this video series. All right, let's begin by defining what we mean by a Bronsted-Lowry acid and base. In a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction, a Bronsted acid, you can underline that, that's key, donates a proton to a Bronsted base, which accepts the proton. For example, in the reaction, the general reaction you see up here, there is an H plus built into HA. We can, even though HA is definitely a covalent molecule, we can think of this as H plus A minus. And in so thinking about this that way, we can see that the H plus is transferred to B. That's where the HB plus comes from on the product side. And A minus is left behind. Let's highlight A minus to illustrate that. A minus is left behind on the product side as well. So what's happened here is a proton transfer process and a shorter name for a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction is proton transfer. Now, upon the removal or acceptance 
of a proton, we generate a species that has either one fewer or one more proton than the starting species. So for example here, if we focus in on this example of water, when H2O loses a proton, we end up with OH-, the hydroxide anion. OH- is the conjugate base of H2O, which we can think of as an acid here because it's losing the proton. The conjugate base of an acid is the species with one fewer proton than the acid itself. And it's a base in the sense that giving the proton back to the conjugate base would produce the original acid. So you can imagine adding a proton to OH- would produce H2O. So conjugates are related by the gain or loss of a proton. Here's another example where we're starting with a base, NH3, and we're adding a proton to it to produce NH4+. Now, NH4 plus has one additional proton relative to NH3, and so we call it the conjugate acid of the base NH3. And notice here again that if we were to lose that proton from NH4 plus, let's say minus H plus here to show that the proton is going away, we get back to NH3. So conjugate acids and bases, conjugate pairs as we call them, are related by the loss or gain of a proton here again. The reason we introduce this terminology right now is that we can notice in any Bronsted acid base reaction, there is an acid and a base on the reactant side and a conjugate base and a conjugate acid on the product side. So any Bronsted acid base reaction contains two conjugate pairs. For example, let's take a look at this reaction of H2O with NH3. It is a proton transfer reaction and the proton transferred comes from water and goes to NH3 to produce NH4. So the proton transferred here is donated by H2O and accepted by NH3. This is why H2O is the acid, it donates the proton, and NH3 is the base. It accepts the proton. But notice on the product side what's happened here. H2O has lost a proton. As a result, the conjugate base of H2O has been produced. At the same time, NH3 has gained a proton and the conjugate acid of NH3 has been produced. So we've got two conjugate pairs here, H2O and OH- and NH3 and NH4+. Two conjugate pairs sort of bridging the reactants and products as we see here in any Bronsted acid-base reaction.